Hey, good morning. Good morning, good morning, Team Jacob. Um, I'm trying to refresh the page here. I'm on my phone for the live video, but I want to see myself. Okay, cool. I wanna see the comments so that I don't miss anybody. Okay, let's see if I can pull this up. Okay, cool. I'll be able to see comments. All right, happy Monday. As anyone jumps on, if you want to just um, put in comments where you are right now, I would love to know where you're checking in from. Uh, I live in, uh, well, I'm north of Charlotte, North Carolina, but I'm a Los Angeles native. So it was quite a, um, a different a different life to move to North Carolina, but we moved here in 2012, actually the very end of 2011. Okay, so I'm just gonna wait about a minute for people to jump on and then I will get started because I want to honor everybody's time. I don't think this training will take much more than, um, hey, Stephanie, my friend, Steph. Um, I don't think this training will take much more than 30, 30 minutes. And at the end, we can do um, some Q&A, okay? Um, did you have a good weekend, Stephanie? What'd you do? By the way, my daughter, Stephanie, my daughter wants to go to University of Michigan. Um... So just as you as you check in, let me know where you're all coming in from. We'll give it just a couple minutes. Hi, Tori. I see you. Did you have a good weekend? Oh, you hung out at the lake? Oh, man. When I went to Michigan, Stephanie, I could not believe all the lakes. And then I understood why it's called, you know, the Great Lakes State because there's lakes literally everywhere and it was so beautiful and I came home and I told my husband I want to move to Michigan Michigan is the most beautiful state I've ever been to he's like you know the winters are cold and they get snow right because I don't like the cold I also don't like the heat I'm a princess I, what can I say I like to be right in the middle <laughs> yes is it it's it's kind of nice here. Hey, Andrea. It's kind of nice here, Tori. Um, and the humidity's low. The humidity's low. Hi, Nicole. Oh, Adina. You live in LA? Checking in from Hungary, my home country. What? That's amazing. You have a lake house in Michigan, but our home is in Indiana. Oh, that's right. Yeah, winters are rough. Of course, the one winter that I spent two weeks in Michigan, it was like the lightest layer of snow and it wasn't that cold. And I'm like, I could do this. He's like, no, you don't understand a real Michigan winter. Um, good to have you here, Adina. Oh, that's okay. You know, <laughs> Adina, you want to hear something funny? At my wedding, we got married April Fool's Day. And on my wedding, my pastor kept calling me Nicole. So it happens all the time. And I'm never offended. If someone calls me the wrong name, I, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm never offended. All right. It's 12.04. Let's get started. I want to honor everybody's time. And um, most people watch this on replays anyway. So if you are watching this on a replay, I'd still love to know where you're um, coming in from. And I still will check back in throughout the day and evening and I can answer any questions. Of course, anyone's always welcome to reach out to me. Um, I'm happy for that. I, I love, um, I, I really love connecting. Okay, so back in April when Rachel put together these new pep rally schedules and asked, you know, who wanted to do a pep rally and what topics. I went for a topic that I actually suck at. And the reason I chose this topic is because I knew it was something that I needed to greatly and quickly improve in my life. And what better way to quickly improve on something than to know you're going to teach on it in a few months. And so I had to go into like green light go mode. I had to start really learning, team building and recruiting. Okay. 
So that's why I chose this subject and hopefully it's not too much of a bumpy ride. Um, first, I want to tell you a little bit about my backstory and you'll see why this is so important about recruiting and team building. But I um, am from Los Angeles, California. I now live in North Carolina. I have a BFA in illustration. So for three years, I worked in an illustration studio in Santa Monica. I was an airbrush artist before Photoshop and before all the artwork was done on computer. I was a traditional airbrush artist and I worked for Disney, Warner Brothers, Hanna-Barbera, Knowledge Adventure. And so when I started seeing Kara show up on TikTok, with this color wheel and talking about Demi. Oh, that appealed to me as an artist. So um, I burned out in illustration after only three years. It was a very isolating type job and I'm more of a people person. And so I went, I fell into Hollywood. It's a long story, but I fell into Hollywood. I started working in television and commercial. I started in reality TV in 2003. And by the time I left Hollywood, I was working on season one of New Girl. And I was pinching myself. I would show up every day to the Fox lot. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm living the dream. I am on a hit TV show with Zoe Deschanel and I was doing the whole cast. Um, I didn't do Zoe, but I did the whole cast and it was so fun and we laughed so hard. And I was like, I cannot even believe I have this job. But within a couple months, I realized that this wasn't the lifestyle I wanted. I was not seeing my daughter. We were working 14, 15, 16 hour days. I had a long commute and my daughter was only four years old. So when my husband's company had an opening in Charlotte, North Carolina, where my family moved in the 90s, we decided to, to move here. And I thought I was retiring. Okay, tell your plans to God and he will laugh. Because I moved here to retire. I was gonna be the PTA mom. I was gonna be the Sunday school teacher. I was gonna be the best housewife and stay-at-home mom that ever existed. It didn't work out that way. It's been so hard for nine years, nine years. We've been here 11, nine years were rough. So I was always looking for ways to make money on the side, right? And so in 2015, I joined Beauty Counter and I loved learning all about clean beauty, but I couldn't go grow a team and I didn't really like house parties and nobody was really doing a lot of online selling. No, There was no such thing as Facebook Live. So slowly that just kind of fizzled out. Then in 2016, one of my childhood friends invited me to join her Beach Body Challenge. And I got into really great shape and I was 47 and I was like, this is so exciting. I want to help other women get in shape. So I joined Beachbody right about that time. Facebook Live started coming out. So I started getting on lives and learning that whole side of social media, but I couldn't grow a team. I had some success at sales. I had some success at monthly uh, Shakeology subscribers, but I could not grow a team because middle-aged women don't want to show up every day and show the world they're working out. And I would get laughed at. Like, so if I would wake up at five in the morning and do my workout and record it and then talk about my Shakeology and then go to a commercial, like maybe I'd work on a NASCAR commercial, like I'd, I'd have little like people poking fun at me and it, it just made me feel really um, embarrassed and vulnerable. So anyway, that didn't work out. So then I got into ketones, okay? And this is in 2017. And um, I was trying to get in really great shape for my 50th birthday and these ketones were always on my feed and a keto diet. And so I, I plunged in, I became a prove it promoter. This is where I started learning how to recruit and I recruited from my own customers and it felt very natural and, and authentic and I was having some good success, but my mom was fighting stage four cancer and my family needed my help and my dad needed my help. And so for a year, I barely worked. Um, this business kind of fizzled out 
my mom lost the battle in 2019 and I'm like, I'm done. I can't grow a team. I have a limited success, but then no success. And I'm just not meant for network marketing. I'm not meant for MLM. I'm not meant for online selling. It's not for me, right? Are you starting to hear some self-limiting beliefs, right? And so then what happened was a year later, quarantine 2020 hit, right? We all remember what that was like being at home for a month or two, completely isolated, locked into the home with your family. And about that time, um, Beauty Counter came back and into my life and they were allowing free signups. You could be a Beauty Counter consultant, totally free. And I needed work because I was a makeup artist at ESPN, commercials, working TV shows in Wilmington, and everything was shut down. So I started selling Beauty Counter again. And within one month, I grew a team. Like seven people reached out and said, are you growing a team? We want to be on your team. And I'm like, okay. So again, had limited success, grew a team, started using TikTok because Facebook that's a whole other story. So I started using TikTok in 2020. I became clean beauty babe. Loved TikTok. Grew like 100,000 people following me in just six months. And this is how I met Amanda Hill. Amanda Hill changed my life. So here's what happened. Um, one day it was fall 2021. And now I'm actually a mature beauty influencer in the clean beauty realm. And I'm getting paid to do campaigns and I'm working on um, Summer I Turn Pretty in Wilmington and then coming home. And then I went out for a couple months to work on a show called Echoes for Netflix. And around this time, Amanda stitched me and I was making pretty good money and I was really happy to be working. But I did a video about how concealer creases, especially on mature women. And this is normal and you can just pat it back out with your finger. And Amanda said, she stitched me and she said, hey, no disrespect to Michelle. I highly res respect her and um, I love her content, but I have a product that doesn't crease and it's beautiful on mature skin. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, really? So I go behind the scenes, I DM her and I'm like, okay, tell me about this said product. Tell me about this product that doesn't crease. So I placed a tiny order. I bought R01, O3 and GY1. And I didn't buy the brushes because I'm like, I'm a makeup artist. I have hundreds of brushes. I don't need Demi brushes. Well, Two weeks later, I bought Demi brushes. And this is what I tell my audience. The Demi brushes are made for Demi. They are so good. So I loved the Demi so much that when I saw the Black Friday sale to buy the artist, you know, the artist edit, I was like, I want this. I need this in my pro kit. I wasn't even thinking about selling. I wasn't thinking about growing a team because I suck at team building, right? I don't know how to grow a team. I only have limited success. I have success and then it, and it fades and then I end up quitting. This I bought just for my pro kit. And two months later, I started using this on commercials, this 07 on this, I, I did a black actress and put the 07 under her eye. It was so gorgeous on high def camera. Her husband was deeper than her. I did the um, R7 under his eye and it was traceless, like gorgeous on high def camera. And I'm like, okay. And it was a frigid air commercial, it was a national commercial. And I'm like, okay, this is beautiful. I need to take this to average women in America and tell them how to use Demi. And so I did a YouTube video and crazy, my life exploded. I, I remember going to Amanda one day and I'm like, Amanda, um, there's like a ton of money in my checking account and I don't understand. And she's like, girl, you're making 40 cent, you're making 40% commission right now. And I'm like, what? So it's been wildfire ever since. One of the reasons I joined Amanda, not only did she lead me to Saint, right? But she said, I'm really good at team building. You're super busy. Why don't you let me help you build a team and you just concentrate on teaching and I'll grow the team for you. And I'm like, beautiful, right? Because I'm not good at team building, right? Right? Self-limiting belief, right? 
So spring happens, spring 2022, and women are slowly starting to want to join my team. And I just let Amanda take it, Amanda take it, Amanda take it, because I was too busy. I'm now building my masterclass. I'm now selling my masterclass. I'm now... Um, Oh, I joined an agency for influencers and they're getting me tons of campaigns over on TikTok. And I was just, uh, I almost had a nervous breakdown. And then I'm doing 500 color matches a month minimum. And I'm like, I'm losing my mind. I'm going to end up in the hospital. So I needed Amanda to help me build my team because uh, I wasn't good at team building. So I'm going to let her do it. And so here's what I want you to write down. So get a pen and paper, or jot it on a post-it note, but... I want to know what your self-limiting beliefs are, okay? What excuses are you making that you don't, you don't want to put in the hard work so you're making excuses? Like, what are your excuses? My excuses are, I suck at team building. I don't want to hold hands. People are messy. Does any of this ring a bell? Um, so put a pin in that because those are important questions and I want you to really... Um, chew on that over, over the course of this next week, okay? So now, I wanna talk about what you have to do to grow a team, okay? You have to build a team, you have to recruit, right? Recruit. So I wanna tell you the biggest secret, okay? I want you to write this down too. The number one way to recruit is, are you ready? Go to events, go to events. They are life changing. Your followers are watching. They're watching you with community. They're watching the excitement. They're watching you get all dolled up. And they will, trust me, people are always looking for community. So go to events. Also, you come away from an event with vision. I'll tell you in a minute about a vision I had on the plane coming home from the big conference in San Antonio. You'll know what you want. When you go there, you'll know what you want because you are all there together with like-minded people who are all locking arms and we're all running this race, right? So there's a sense of purpose, there's passion, there's excitement. Events are life-changing. Now, once I went to the Saint event, I it, it really changed my whole relationship with Saint. See, I was just always this girl on YouTube teaching mature women how to sell Demi and Saint, okay? And I was kind of a lone wolf. Like Amanda was one of my closest friends. I love Amanda, but I was kind of a lone wolf. I kind of check in a little bit here and there on Team Jacob, but I was too busy to be involved in Saint. I was just selling it. It was just a way to make money. And then I went to the event and, oh, you guys, Kara, I mean, she broke my heart. I mean, she broke my heart in her passion, her love for everyone in the company, her love for the product, her love for Demi, um, the foster program. I already knew about it, but to hear about it in person, like it gives you chills all over your body. And then they really started talking more about the um, Angels Landing, which is the organization for kids who age out of foster care. And that is where she captured my heart that, that those kids, those kids who are in their twenties and they have nobody, that's my, that's my purpose. That's my mission. I want to help those kids. And so I came away from this event going, Oh my gosh, I want to be deeper involved. I, I want to tell the world about Saint. This is a beautiful company and this isn't an icky company. There's no ickiness here. We all know icky people. We all know icky MLMs. This is something I'm so proud to be a part of. And it literally took going to San Antonio to change my mindset and to change my life. So I came home from San Antonio and I immediately made a how to become a Saint artist YouTube video. I couldn't wait to tell everyone about it. I was so proud to be part of Saint. And I'm a year and a half into my Saint purchase, a year and a half for me to start openly talking about recruiting and not being embarrassed about it and talking about what a beautiful company it is. And so in that one week, I got 19 artists. I got 19 artists in one week. 
And what I, what I said, and you can even use the same phrase, and I think I might have picked this phrase up from my coach, but I told people that everyone had a seat at the table. Everyone. If you just want to join my team for community, if you love Saint and you just want to be part of community, join my team. You, I, I'm not going to push you to sell. I'm not your boss. I'm not your mommy. Just let's lock arms and have fun as mature women, you know? So you want to create like purpose and mission for your team. And that's what I was doing. Um, some women really want to run with the business the way I do. And that's exciting too, but there's a room for everyone at the table. And you can use that phrase because it makes women feel safe and it makes women feel like they're not any less than if they're just there for community and they don't want to sell, they're still important. Okay. And so another thing I said in my video was I said the first 10 people who respond and join you know, will get to be on my team. I only have limited spots. I didn't know how long it would take to onboard and get people up and running. But when they started trickling in and there were up to 19, I mean, how do you tell someone no? I just said everyone has a seat at the table. And now I'm saying no, sorry, I'm stopping at 10. So I did let 19 in. It was a lot at first, I'll be honest, but it, there was a sense of urgency. So t sometimes with recruiting, you have to use that sense of urgency for people to take action. You know, people wanted to be on my team. They didn't want to miss out on the top 10 spot. And so they, they signed up and it was really exciting. Okay. So you have a team. Okay. You have a team. Now what? Now what? Right. So when I was on the plane coming home from San Antonio, I was kind of just looking out the window and I was just kind of thinking about just what a great event it was. And I was on that mountain high that so many of us are on. And I had this vision and I wasn't even thinking of me. I wasn't thinking of a team, but like, I believe God gave me this vision and it was me and my entire team on stage we had just hit level 10, not me, my team, okay? There was no Michelle Spieler behind me on the 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 big jumbotron, right? Like the 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 big video. There was no Michelle Spieler. It was Close Up Club. That's my that's my team name, Close Up Club, because we all want to look really pretty close up. And we were spilling off the stage. There were so many middle-aged women up there and we were spilling off the stage and we were just like out of our minds, excited that we did it. Like we're the demographic that's, oh, I don't understand technology and I don't know how to sell and oh, people are gonna judge me. Whereas younger women in their 20s and 30s, they just go for it, right? So for us to accomplish a level 10 team when it's so hard to work on mindset and social media, in this demographic was something that was like the most exciting vision. And now I'm not just a gal. I'm not just an artist selling makeup. I want to build an empire of mature women doing this, locking arms and doing this life. And so because I had that vision, I immediately almost had a panic attack because I'm like, I, but I'm the one who, I don't know how to grow a team. I, I don't know how to, I don't handhold. People are messy. These are the lies I kept saying and I kept saying. And I instantly thought of a girl who I followed for five years. And I'm like, I need this girl to coach me because I need someone to teach me how to build a team. I need someone to teach me how to build a leader. Drop an emoji if this is you. If you think I'm not really a born leader, I can't really lead, drop me an emoji, because that's what I used to think. I'm a firstborn, I'm a Leo, I'm kind of a leader by nature, but I was like, I'm not a leader. I'm not a leader. That's a lie. Anyone can learn anything, just like you learned a, a second language. You learn maybe piano, you learn to cook, you learn to do makeup. You can learn leadership. We can do this, okay? We birth babies. We can definitely learn how to be a leader, right? And so I see the emojis coming in. Woo, I love it. Okay, so I got a coach and I invested in a coaching program because I was serious. 
I was going to train leaders and I was going to show middle-aged women that there's nothing to fear and we're going to do this, okay? So you have to have that vision and you have to have a purpose bigger than yourself and then you have to make an investment. You do. Um, I'm not telling you to go out and spend $20,000 on a coaching program, but you have to make an investment that scares you a little bit. My, my investment in my coach, it scared me. But and, it, and it's a big investment and it's it's a chunk of change each month. But it was something I had to do to learn how to be a leader and train leaders. It's just part of this this job. It's part of this world we're in. So um, I invested in me and I invested in my team and um, I'm growing people on my team. We're working on mindset. Um, and I think up to this point, you know, because I'm Gen X and put an X in comments. If you're Gen X, I want to see X's because we were the feral kids, right? Our parents didn't really check in on us. We just figured life out. And just like myself, like I just figured social media out. I figured Facebook lives. I figured, um, you name it. I figured it out. I just, I figured out TikTok all on my own in 2020. No one was, oh, over 50 on TikTok. Nobody was over 50 on TikTok. I just figured it out. I see you, Susanna. You're my, you're my tribe. I love my Gen X. And so anyway, so I had that same mindset. Like no one taught me how to do this. Like figure it out. That was my attitude. Figure it out. Figure it out. And my coach said, no, Michelle, you have to do hand-holding. You have to hold hands when you onboard. Even up to a year, you might be holding a lot of people's hands. This is part of team building. This is part of being a leader. And here I've been saying for years, I don't hold hands. I don't do that. And she's like, no, you have to. And I'm like, <sighs> Okay, she's giving me license to now spoon feed people to get them started. And I didn't know that I could do that. And that same week, one of my dear friends, and I really encourage you to reach out to people, maybe within Saint, maybe with other MLM companies, find yourself a really good accountability partner. I have a really good accountability partner named Leah. She was a huge executive with Sephora for years. She lived all over the world. And she said to me that very same week that my coach told me, you have to, you have to hold hands. You just have to, that's a good leader. And that, and that's what gets everyone up and running. And Leah told me, Michelle, my, my best, strongest teams at Sephora were the ones where I did the most hand holding. and it's hard and it takes time, but you have to hold hands to show them how to do it. And then they'll take off and fly. And I was like, two people in one week told me I have to hold hands. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. I had a total aha moment, right? So that leads to number three. I want to talk about the team building itself and how I'm doing that currently right now. Um, I would say right now I have about 60 women in my team page, on my Facebook team page. And, you know, maybe out of 60, there's only a dozen of us that are pretty active every day. But we're pretty, we're getting pretty close. We're getting closer and closer. Um, I feel like a sisterhood with these women and I see them working hard. They're very coachable. I see the ones who I'll do a training on something and then I see them do it or I'll see them do something and I'll say, oh, I see what you did there. And they're like, I listen. And so you start to see the people on your team who are coachable, right? But remember, everyone has a seat at the table. So I never make anyone feel inferior if they don't want to do what I say, if they don't want to do sales, they're just maybe there for community. Community. So um, you want to onboard everyone the same way. And so pick an onboarding process, whatever works for you and onboard everyone the same way. Treat everyone equal. Have a bigger mission than you. OK, so I always tell my team, this is not the Michelle show. I'm sick of Michelle. I cannot stand Michelle. But my mission is to see that stage overflowing with women over 45 50 it's okay if you're 36 I, I can I consider you middle-aged if you I was I felt middle-aged at 36 so I'll consider I have one 30 year old on my team 
32. She's 32. I won 32 year old. Bless her. I love her. But um, you have to have a bigger mission. And my mission, and I tell my team this all the time, is we are going to get on that stage and we are going to show the young women how it's done. And they're going to look up to us and they're going to go, wow, being 50, 60, 70, it's nothing to fear. Like they're cool. These are cool chicks up there. So we have a bigger mission. You have to have that bigger mission than yourself. And everyone has to be on board with that mission because that's what makes us all wake up every day and do what we do right because it can be hard there are days where it's hard to be on social media so um have have fun on the team like we just started um doing like a a, a more formal weekly schedule and i had different team manger, team um members take different days so everyone has ownership of the team because again i don't want the michelle show i'm sick of michelle show me what you got tell me your mindset and guess what just like i'm not really a pro at team building or recruiting but i chose this topic today it's forcing my team members to pick a topic that maybe they don't really know very well, but they're gonna lead the team on this topic and it forces them to learn that topic and become really good at it, right? So find goals and tasks that you can get your team members involved in because it helps them grow and see their full potential. And then everyone gets to see their strengths. So that's really exciting to me to watch people grow. Um, another thing is we chose a really fun logo this week and everyone got to vote on it. So it didn't matter what I thought of the logo. I wanted to know what the team wanted and we just voted on it this weekend. And so we're going to start having t-shirts made and, you know, those can be fun tools for recruiting too. If everyone's wearing the team name on a t-shirt while they're doing videos, people are going to go, well, what's that? Well, what's the close-up club? I want to be in the close-up club. And again, Everyone has a seat at the table. So come in, come into our team. You can just be here for community. You don't have to sell if you don't want to. So always make yourself like really open and available for anyone who wants to come. Another thing my coach told me is she always keeps control over having one big team page. So just like Rachel has Team Jacob, I have my close-up club. As my team members start to grow their teams, obviously we'll all still stay in the close-up club, and then that way it's easier for them to recruit to their teams because now we're in a big fun team environment. Whereas like if you get five or six people, that's not a very fun Facebook team page with only five or six people because you only get about 20% of the people showing up anyway. So always keep that one big team page, which I think you guys already know that. But if you don't, that's why um, that's why I wanted to, to mention that. Um, and then um, keep passionate. Okay, keep passionate, keep excited. Excitement and passion is what attracts people to you, to your team. And so keep it up and whatever that takes. I don't know what it takes to make you excited or passionate. I will tell you that going to events is what really sparked me. It's what kind of changed my whole path in Saint. And so I cannot stress enough how important team events are. Um, and I, I can't wait to go to the next one. I wish we had them more often, but maybe even look in your area and put together some type of a regional event, right? Or if you just want to get together with other saint artists, it doesn't even have to be to sell, but you could do a mastermind in your region and put together like a fun mastermind and just get with like-minded people, right? Because when you change your circle, you change your life. Okay, that was my mindset Monday today in my team. The people you spend the most time with are the ones you become most like. So if you have certain family and friends that are kind of critical, maybe they're kind of negative. Obviously, I'm not, this isn't a cult. I'm not telling you to abandon your family and friends, right? But you want to be very mindful of the people that are maybe giving you backhanded compliments or poking fun at you a little bit like people did to me when I was a Beachbody coach. Um, you want to start slowly spending more time with the people who lift you up, right? Successful people always will be your cheerleader. So when I think of all my friends who made like, you know, quarter of a million dollars a year through every MLM I joined, they were my biggest cheerleaders. 
because they were already successful. But it was the the women who don't really feel good about their, themselves or maybe they play small in life or maybe they don't feel they have a purpose. Those are the ones that will kind of make little backhanded compliments or nitpick you. I'm just telling you to like, be mindful of that, pay attention to that and get with like-minded people and spend more time with people who are in pursuit of the same things you're in pursuit of, okay? So my last question to you today is, and then we'll, we'll take Q&A if anyone has any questions. My last question to you is, what one thing can you do this week to attract to your team? Or maybe you don't have a team. What's one thing you can do this week to start growing a team? My coach always does one recruitment video a week. That's it. She does one recruitment video a week. And I'm not talking about like the big YouTube video that I did. I'm going to try to do one YouTube video every quarter and open up my team to new people. Um, but she recommends one recruiting video a week and that's it. And it can be in an Instagram story. It could be a Facebook live. It can be really quick and simple. It could just be like, hey, if you are my customer and you love Saint, like, have you ever thought about joining? Like, let's have fun. Let's do this business. It's fun. Women are looking for community, especially women my age. They are looking for community. So I want you to keep reflecting on your self-limiting beliefs. I want you to catch things that you keep saying, the excuses you keep using. I want you to catch those and I want you to flip the script this week. Really be mindful of that. I really had to stop saying people are messy. Of course people are messy. I'm messy. Um, I, ha I had to stop saying I'm not hand holder. I'm not going to hold hands. I'm not going to build a team unless I hold hands. I'm not going to build a successful team unless I hold hands. And you know what? I'm actually loving it. I've had more fun in the past month with my team than ever. And I'm still learning and I'm still growing. And I'm maybe maybe I'll do this topic again in a year and we'll revisit where the team is, you know, and we'll revisit like where we've gone and how many levels we've gone up. But this is a learned skill. Leadership is a learned skill and you have to invest time and possibly money into learning that skill. So I hope that helps everyone. We have the power to change anything in our life. It just takes a lot of work and sometimes that can be scary and sometimes we can feel judged. But when you have that bigger mission, you're, you're aiming at the goal. You're aiming at the finish line. You're not going to let anyone get in your way. Oh, you love this, Rebecca. Thank you so much. So if anyone has any um, questions, you know, feel free. Um, oh, thanks. Thanks, Tammy. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I try to be authentic. I find that when you um, are really open with your vulnerabilities, other people are too. And then it just kind of bonds you. And when you say, hey, I kind of suck at this, you know, maybe you do too. People will be like, yeah, I kind of suck at it too, but I'm seeing you do it, so now I'm gonna do it. And so it's kind of infectious, right? If you're vulnerable and admit your weaknesses, but then you're learning to build strengths, that's infectious, people want that. Oh, thank you, Adina. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for tuning in from Hungary. That's amazing. Yes, Tori. Change is scary. It is. It is. I'm facing a big change right now, which I can't talk openly about, but it's a actually two big changes in my life. Two big changes I'm facing right now. And one change is going to happen in the next couple weeks and one change could happen in the next couple of months. And it's scary. But you know what? I'm open to it because every time I've walked through a door that has scared me, it has brought abundant blessings and changed my life. So sometimes we have to like not be afraid to change, right? I'm so glad this helped Adina. I'm so happy. Um, someone asked to who my coach was. Oh, Rebecca. Um, my coach is Jessie Lee Ward. She was with the company Prove It. I still drink ketones, by the way. Um, 
Andrea, do it. I know you can do it and you always have my help and support. You got this, exactly. Um, yeah, so um, I had been following Jesse Lee for five years and what impressed me about Jesse Lee is I know her five years now online. She was at the birth of a few team members' children, like in the birth room with them. Like, you know, and when she, her team members would hit like level seven rank or level eight rank, you know, she would send them their favorite Louis Vuitton handbag or Christian Louboutin shoes, right? She um, would go to her team members, kids, five-year-old birthday party. She knew their dog's name. She knew their kid's name. She knew birth dates. Like she loved her team. And so on the plane where I'm like, I had that vision of like my huge team hitting level 10 and I was like panicked, like, oh, I can't do this. How am I going to do this? Jesse Lee Ward popped into my head and she's amazing. She has three coaching levels. You can always reach out to me on the side and I can tell you more about it. Um, but she has three coaching levels and I can always help guide you. Yes, Diana, it's okay. It's, yeah, you haven't had a sale yet. Yeah, um, it's okay. Keep sharing because people are watching you. And I want to say this too. Only about 10% of our audience sees us. That's it. So I don't know how many followers you have, but only, if only 10% see any of your content, and that's if they're online. Like what if they're not online that day that you do a saint video? So you have to remember very few people are actually seeing our videos. And so we have to do it again and again and again and again. And you might think, oh, I'm a broken record, right? But you have to remember like, Remember how we all learned watching Sesame Street? How do you learn your ABCs? You do it again and again and again and again. And you know what? The human brain as an adult is not much different than a toddler. And so we just have to keep showing up again and again and again and again. And don't follow too many saint artists. I hate to say that because I have so much fun watching saint artists but it can really make you too focused on yourself and your own content women are going to resonate with you if you just show up and share your saint makeup your saint journey authentically and they're gonna sometimes see like is this just a fly by the night is this just like a you know one and done type thing or is this person really committed to this company because people are not going to join your team if they think you hop around from MLM to MLM and you're just always getting into the newest thing. They're going to watch you for a while. So you have to remember, and in this day and age of social media, we used to say that people have to see a product seven times before they buy it. It is now up to 10 times. People might have to see your video 10 times before they'll buy from you. So please stay um, consistent and just keep being yourself. Yes, Rebecca, Jesse Lee. That's another thing too. Um, Jesse Lee has an, a, a phenomenal, um, podcast. So if you don't have the money right now to invest in coaching, you can just, I listen to her podcast for years, her YouTube for years. I catch her live videos. Like I've literally watched Jesse Lee for five years. I know how she loves her people and how she grew her team and she has an empire and her team is literally called empire. And so I'm like, that's the only person for me because I know her and trust her. And now I know her in person. We just did a huge mastermind on a yacht in Miami two weeks ago. And that's when she looked at me in the eyes and she's like, Michelle, you have to handhold to build a team. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I just needed her to tell me that it completely changed my mindset because I trust her. I trust her. I've seen her. She's not one of those fake coaches. She's like the real deal. And I didn't want someone from within Saint necessarily coaching me. I wanted someone who has done multiple businesses outside of uh, network marketing. All right, everyone, it has now been 44 minutes. What? Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you were here. If you're on a replay, just please type replay and um, let us know where you're coming in from. It was so fun to be here. I hope that this really 
struck a chord with some of you. I hope that if any of you have been playing on repeat the same excuses, I hope this has really changed your mindset because if I can do it, you can do it. I'm nothing special. I'm just a woman like you. If I can do it, you can do it. And I'm not even doing it yet. Like I still have a long way to go, but I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I love my team so much I could cry. So anyway, hey, Donita, I see you. All right, thank you so much. Oh, hey, Rachel, no worries. I know you're busy. I kept. I have to catch a lot of these pep rallies on replay too. Thank everyone. Thanks so much. I love y'all. Bye. You can always reach out to me for any more questions too. Okay, bye.